Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Future Friday. In today's episode, we're gonna take a look at very unique topic is using train as batteries. So let's dive right into it. Now, first you have to understand the problem. What the hell there is a problem? It's basically grid itself is not smart. Grid is dumb. So you can check my video about smart grid here, but point is right now grid is very dumb. So we have to balance what we call supply and demand. So whatever the power is being produced must be consumed almost instantaneously. There is no lag here. Like you have to, let's say 500 megawatt is being produced. It must be absorbed uh, as in must be consumed. If not, it will damage the grid itself. So we always have to make sure within certain tolerances that supply and demand is matched. Now. Without it, grid becomes unstable and especially if you have national grid, you can collapse a whole country just by messing up one power plant. So for this reason, we always try our best to do, you know, what we call grid matching. Now to do that currently, what we employ is called peak power plant. Now, many of you know who have worked with power plants or things of that nature, power plant have what's called base load, as in this is the power that they can provide 24 into 7 into 365. Now this power, it's max efficiency. So let's say you built a coal power plant, you're gonna make sure it runs at 100% capacity. It's not like car engines or diesel generator. It's meant for uh, running at 100% capacity. Of course, little bit here and there is there. It's not like it's meant for 100 megawatt. Let's say one generator, you can't uh, you know, get 110 megawatt. But point is, it's like at that capacity, whatever it is rated to, whatever power plant it is, is generally at max efficiency, be it nuclear, be it coal, be it natural gas, be it petroleum based. So for this reason, all power plant always have exact output. So in this graph, you can get a very clear idea. It's like that 50, let's say this is a power plant or hydro power plant. You have 1500 megawatt that is coming out of it. Okay, cool. Everything is awesome. Now that 1500 megawatt that is coming out of it has a constant cost to it. Like, okay, I'm going to charge you, let's say one cent uh, per kilowatt, whatever it may be. So when you exceed this, like let's say the environment or let's say your consumer started to demand more power and this cannot go up it's already at max capacity we employ something known as peak power plants like these now these power plants are generally run on natural gas sometimes petroleum sometimes diesel but these are puppies that can start very quickly and uh, give a lot of power to the grid they are they come in the size of like 100 to 500 megawatts so they are uh, they're not supposed to run 24 into 7 but they are there in case your demand exceeds production capability and they, they are generally shut down at night now as you can understand building something uh, this big this complex and only using it till like, you know once in a while means the electricity that is coming out of these plant are very expensive it's upwards of 20% uh, to 50% to sometimes multiple times more expensive what it is from you know a coal power plant or whatever have you so for this reason people don't want to use this now is there a solution to this yes let's say during daytime your power consumption goes high there is a very good chance during night your power consumption goes down but your power plant is still producing so if you can store that power and then sell it back to the grid when at the time of need you can replace this or at least reduce the time they need to be up so this is the problem that's why we want grid scale power storage you can check my video on grid scale batteries here so point is i'm talking hundreds of megawatt 500 megawatt 5000 megawatt so at this scale you can balance an entire nation without you know causing grid outages so do we have any uh, practical solutions well if you check my video i go over details but uh, right now i will give you a tldr version of it it's basically we have small batteries something like this this is good for small communities where it can balance the grid awesome like let's say small solar farm small wind farm and small village this is perfect for that upwards of 30 to 100 megawatt capacity this is awesome then we come to large battery right now there is no large battery as in like more than 1000 megawatt capacity battery in construction uh, so i I can't exactly say but uh, you can check out flow cell batteries now these batteries have a multiple advantage over lithium ion they are not as dense however they do have the ability that you can store power indefinitely in them basically you charge them up they don't discharge on their own and uh, when you're talking about megawatt scale they actually start to become cheaper so in these puppy you can store upwards of 1000 megawatt or something of that nature now again that is not big enough uh, 
to the biggest storage system we have it's called pump storage basically you have a hydro dam and it generally pumps a, a water up a reservoir now when it's pumping it's called charging now when you peak demand happens and let's say your hydropower plant cannot generate more power it will start discharging this pond and during that gravity discharge you will get extra electricity now this system is generally starts at one uh, 500 megawatt to 2000 megawatt or something of that nature so this is quite successful technology however you can understand first you have to find a place where you have abundant water then you have to find a place where it has abundant height uh, variation it's not like you have a flat land and you have a sea there it's going to help you out you need like you know uh, so it's kind of very location specific now height is very easy to find but uh, a sufficient amount of water is not cheap so these are our options so problems with all these system is uh, always in these three tiers first is cost like uh, you can build lithium ion battery banks for 1000 megawatt or 5000 megawatt it's just gonna cost you more than the gdp of many small countries so as you can understand it's not feasible for everyone pump hydro is very good but uh, it does not scale down so let's say you have a small village you can't really give them pumped hydro and uh, again let's say you are a country like india there are only few places where we have this pumped hydro storage systems because like you know you need height variation and you need water uh, supply so kind of very complex so these three always ends up uh, you know bottlenecking our grid scale energy storage cost scale as in how many megawatts we are talking about and location where can we establish it so what is this idea of using train as battery well using rails as you can see normal track rails uh, we uh, achieve what we call very low rolling resistance basically uh, the amount of energy you are spending to rotate the wheel goes down so significantly that you can move one ton let's say on these wheels uh, with a basically horsepower equivalent that you would need for let's say 10 kilo basically a simple horse can pull a much bigger load and uh, if you have motor that is only let's say 500 horsepower it can pull uh, you know very large load not at high speed speed is different but i'm talking about moving a uh, large mass it's very efficient so we want to use rail and we want to use gravity now gravity is the medium how we are storing the energy so it might sound out how the heck gravity can be used to store energy well it's what we call gravitational potential energy same way you push water up and uh, you drain energy from it this is exactly the same so you will have train tracks that is going up a hill or a gradient now this gradient cannot be like you know exactly straight it has to be slopes because uh, that wheel on wheel uh, steel on steel reduces friction but also reduces traction so you cannot have like you know very sharp incline because the train will not have enough grip to climb on it so let's say 10 percent gradient or 5 percent gradient is achieved so during charging cycle you're gonna send electricity to the railway and it's gonna you know like this gonna move up the uh, incline and once you want to discharge it it's gonna fall back now basically you are using gravity as a storage medium and uh, using concrete why concrete well it's cheap second and you want to make sure the footprint of the mass is very small so you know you, you losses that you occur uh, using air resistance goes down to give you a context of all this think of it this way pumped hydro can go as high efficiency as 80 percent that's the maximum you can go like some new designs that are in construction right now should reach 90 percent but it's nowhere near batteries but again pump hydro is talking about 2000 megawatt 5000 megawatt so for that reason people are okay with it these puppies should be somewhere around that somewhere around 80 to 90 percent efficient so what are the pros of this situation first it's water independent i told you like more often than not you will find a place where you have a very convenient gradient for you but it's not necessary that you will find abundant water supply for that so this makes location very easy second the capacity matters here like uh, for instance the small project they want to build that starts at 50 megawatt like that's a significant amount of energy storage and that's a pilot project that they are working on uh, you can find the links down below so it can be scaled up to very large uh, capacity and not to mention let's say you build the track let's say you did all the things you have one positive track one uh, negative track as in like you know one for charging one for discharging and uh, you have let's say 100 megawatt capacity going up and down now you can add extra train and you still increase the capacity so your land footprint does not always you know double by doubling the capacity so there is a lot of room of growth and that's why the bigger you make it the more uh, cost effective it becomes per gigawatt basically how much money you are spending per kilowatt to store that goes down dramatically 
so this is the whole idea and uh, the diagram that i am seeing here i'm not sure about this but it would be pretty awesome but uh, the, what they are targeting is for three phase overhead wire so many of you know we generally have one phase wire there are some railways in this planet that uses three phase wiring system i do not know how they work generally they have two uh, pentagraph on top for two wires and uh, third one is uh, one of the rails but again i do not understand how that will work because that is a live wire both three will be live wire so there are ways to do this but uh, if they did that it will look pretty cool so have you know three phase wire on top or you know two on top and one bottom because that's how it's done generally so there are a lot of pros with the system because if you're talking about uh, let's say this plant is being tested near a wind farm you have to store a lot of wind randomly like you're talking about megawatts of power that is extra produced you have to store it quickly so this system allows that so are there any consequences to this well yes it has a way too many moving parts like a, a electrical battery inherently has no moving part you can have entire system where you have charging cycle discharging cycle and uh, outside of cooling fans you have almost no moving part that means the overall efficiency is very high even when you are considering the efficiency loss that happens when you are converting you know ac into dc and dc into ac you still talking about 95 percent efficiency and that is one core component about hydro that's why it loses so much efficiency there are so many moving parts this has as you can see that is a small train that i'm showing you it has so many parts so this does drain your efficiency so and not to mention this also increases your maintenance cost and it does have large footprint because uh, let's say you have flow cell battery or lithium ion battery you can stack them on top of each other and uh, that way you can reduce the footprint the hectares of area you need to buy for few megawatts of storage it's uh, gonna be very small with batteries but it's gonna be uh, you know mind-bogglingly large when you're talking about this thing now that itself is not that big of a problem but this only works at large scale now this may not be a very big issue but does a uh, they are mentioning is that this is not something that you were gonna give a small uh, let's say small there is a small community only few thousand people live there but they have their you know wind system they have their solar system they have their wave power system uh, you can check my video about wave power here and if they have all that that does provide a lot of power but provides unbalanced power like you know sometimes they will have too much sometimes they are too little so to that community you can't expect them to build this this is not feasible at small scale however they can do uh, very simple batteries bags so this is the consequence of it now this was my presentation of battery bank used as a train so or vice versa i hope you liked it or learned from it in that case please leave a like if you didn't don't worry about it you can dislike it i would urge it to share it amongst your friend hashtag s2t and please subscribe press the bell icon if you're free and as always thanks for watching